Hey there everyone, it's Elmery here, call sign KJ5LXP, and for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Hextenna Deluxe from Alpha Antenna. Now, if you're looking for a great, versatile, portable antenna, this antenna might just be for you. Let's see what's inside. The Hextenna Deluxe from Alpha Antenna is a portable HF, VHF, and UHF antenna with three configurations. As a dipole, it covers 2 to 40 meters with telescopic stainless steel whips nearly 18 feet long. As a vertical, it operates on 10 to 20 meters, plus 220 and 440 megahertz, using a 31-foot counterpoise. And with additional elements, it can also be configured as a Yagi for directional gain. What makes it stand out is its portability. The entire system collapses down to just two feet in length, small enough to carry in a pack, yet rugged enough for field use in extreme temperatures and winds. Now we have each element out of its bag. Uh, this is the tripod piece that all the elements will be attached to. Here we have the, um, the hub and all of its fun configurations. I believe this is why it's called the hextenna because this is the hub and it's a hexagon. It's got six sides and each side has a certain element incorporated with what it, uh, its functionalities. And this is the heart of the hextenna deluxe, the hub that makes everything possible. Element one is your thread port for running the antenna as a vertical. Element two is where the first dipole whip connects. Element three is the wing nut stud. That's where the counterpoise ties in. Element four is the solid tripod mount for locking it down in the field. Element five is your coax connector, the feed point that brings the signal in. And element six is the second dipole thread completing the dipole setup. And I think this is why it's called the Hextenna. So there's the hub. We've got our two telescoping whips that um, allow us to operate from 70 centimeters all the way up to 40 meters. So we've got two of those because it has multiple, multiple configurations. We can do the vertical uh, configuration and the uh, horizontal dipole configuration. Over here now we have the counterpoise element with a o-ring connector for the hub there on the right and we have a I believe it's an insulator piece but uh, we've got our wire for that for your vertical assembly. Then over here we have these two alligator clips for the corona ball of the horizontal dipole antenna. These pieces allow you to you want to be able to hook these pieces on whenever you're using 30 meters and 40 meters to help the length of your antenna. And these pieces are for the stakes. Right now I don't have the stakes out, they're in that bag, but they're just stakes that go through these holes and you can stake them to the ground to have your antenna stay sturdy. Actually one more piece, this is a, uh, looks like a universal mount to be able to mount the hub in a, a different spot or place that we would like to then say your tripod. So this will just screw onto there and you can mount this piece um, anywhere you would like. And here's our lovely tripod. The tripod mount has three extendable legs, reaching up to about six feet tall when fully extended. The legs don't have preset stops, so you can adjust each one freely to the exact angle or position you need. At the bottom, each leg has a stake point for locking it into the ground, but the tripod also sits sturdy on concrete. Height adjustment is simple. Just loosen the screw near the bottom and release the clamp at the top to let the legs slide out smoothly. And for portability, the tripod includes a built-in carrying strap, making it easy to fold up and take anywhere. Now that we've gone through each element, let's get it deployed. Once again, thank you Alpha Antenna for sending me your Hextenna Deluxe. Let's go. I don't know, I might cut that out. <laughs> All right, while I'm setting up this antenna, and oops, you just saw me drop the hub there. I just wanna take a moment to say thank you all for the support you've shown this channel. Ham radio has really changed my life. There's so much to learn with this hobby and I kinda of treat each new avenue like a mini game with the main goal just being to have fun. Whether experimenting with antennas, chasing contacts or learning something new, every step keeps the hobby exciting. So thanks again for being part of the journey and let's keep exploring together. So what am I doing right now? I'm getting the antenna ready for 10 meters. To do that, I need to adjust the length of the whips so it tunes correctly for that band. I'm starting off in the horizontal dipole configuration, but later we'll switch it up and go vertical and tune the antenna for 20 meters. Oh, it's a little low. 
So this here is the FT891 from Yaesu, and it is has connected to it the uh, antenna tuner, which is the FC50. And this is a go kit that is um, a friend is letting me borrow to operate. And yeah, let's let's operate on 10 meters right now. Okay, let's get to the tech levels, which I believe is 28.3 to 28.5. Let's just start the very start of the band. Let's move some more. Is that still FT8? No, that's just noise. Kilo Juliet 5, Lima X Ray Papa. Five and one over. So when they okay. Kilo Juliet five Lima X Ray Papa. Wow. So when he calls CQ again, so I can jump in now. Kilo Juliet 5, Lima X Ray Papa. 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 I guess it's safe to say, no matter what gear you have, propagation is king. On 10 meters, we weren't able to make any contacts at all. I've got Lance here with me. His call sign is KM6LMP, and he holds a general license. And to make sure our equipment was working, he tuned into a frequency being used for a POTA activation on the 20 meter band. Lance was able to make a confirmed contact there. We got a signal report of 5-6 from the other operator, and the signal we received was about a 5-7. Someday, I'll get my first 10 meter contact, but that day was not today. Thankfully, I'll have my general privileges soon, since I'm taking the exam this weekend. Wish me luck. Hey. <laughs> We were activating on 10 meters and the bands just weren't going to open up for us. We definitely heard a lot of signals coming in, but whenever we were transmitting, it doesn't sound like our signal was reaching out to the other stations. We heard people from Italy, from Washington, and even Kansas. Though we did switch over to the 20 meter band because um, I'm here with someone who has those privileges. Uh, I don't have those privileges yet because I'm a tech. And we did get a successful hunt for a POTA activation there. So that, that was great though, just 10 meters and where I'm at with right now with my uh, radio journey, I can only access um, the tech privileges. And so on 10 meters, we weren't able to get my signal out, but that's okay. Tune in on Sunday for when I get my AG. So today is Friday, September the 19th. Tomorrow, September 20th, is the Texas QSO party. So I and a couple other uh, YouTube operators will be activating Lake Ray Hubbard and September 20th for the Texas QSO party. It'll also be my first real kind of look at what POTA activations really look like with other more experienced ham radio operators. So that's gonna be a really great time um, to get to meet other ham operators who are more experienced in this area. Really excited to get to learn from them, see uh, lots of other cool equipment and just have a great time. And yeah, bye everyone. This is Kilo Juliet 5, Lima X-Ray Papa. Thanks for watching.